Welcome to tutorial three, warped field. This is going to build on the work we did in class yesterday uh, with parameterized surfaces. So the first thing I'm going to do in Rhino is I'm going to create a plane and rebuild it to have six points in U, six in V, and deform it. So give us something to work on. Okay, now I'm going to uh, take this surface parameter here and set it to the plane. And this is super important, is I'm going to make sure that reparameterize is checked. Um, because reparameterize basically takes the domain in U, or X, and the domain in V, or Y, and makes sure that those domains are both from 0 to 1 in both directions. And that's important because down here what we're going to do is create a series of points whose domains are 0 to 1. So one, one range of points for U and one for V. And this just sets the number of points. Um, and I'm going to dump those to a uh, component which creates a point from those two series of numbers using the cross-reference data matching. You see that what we get is just sort of dumb points, but I'm not really interested in those points um, as they exist in grasshopper space or XY space. Really what I'm interested in doing is taking those points and using those as the UV parameters at which I'm going to evaluate this surface. So here um, is evaluate surface in the surface tag uh, uh, tab which takes as its input a reparameterized surface and a list of UV points. And then what you get is you get a bunch of points and the normal vector, that's the vector that says which way is up at each one of those points. So in those points exists now, these are points in the sort of real, real world space. So I'm going to call these, like, surface points. Um, now what we could do, uh, if we like, is let's, let's create a cone, a series of, a field of cones on that grid. And the cone takes a base plane, uh, a base radius, and a height. And I've set up two parameters for those. So this is the cone height. This is the base radius. And then one of the one of the outputs that the eval component gives you is a frame, which is essentially just a plane sitting on that surface. But I want to make my own plane, and you'll see why later. And I'm going to make my plane from a normal. So here we need the origin point of that plane, which is going to be the point on the surface, and the up vector, the normal vector. And I'm going to start with the normal at that particular point on the surface uh, right out of this component. When I do that, what I get, as you'll see, is I get a... Um, turn the preview off here. Is I get a series of planes sitting on my surface. I can make them a little taller if I like. I guess I can't. I'm not sure why those flipped, but um, I don't know, maybe I'll... It's really weird, actually. I'm not sure exactly why that should do that. You can always flip the surface if that happens, but sometimes it's just a matter of, like, that's some kind of weird grasshopper bug. All right, but anyway, um, what we could also do if we wanted is we could create an attractor point if we wanted to make those cones point differently. Um, and I'm going to set this, I have a, a, a point.
point parameter there that I'm going to set to this point. And I am going to um, create a new vector from two points that starts at my surface point and ends at my attractor point. And when I do that, I could use that as the new up vector for my plane, which gets fed to the cone. And you can see what's happening now is that all of my cones want to point to my new attractor. But what if we wanted somehow to, um, what if we wanted somehow to, to do something in between? You know, if we wanted to take our surface normal and mix it with our new vector, our sort of uh, tractor vector, and get something in between. If we want to mix those two, right now we're only using the direction of the vector, but vectors also have a, a magnitude. And we can use the, uh, this component, which sets the amplitude or magnitude, same thing, of a vector. And we can just, let's just give it a slider. If we do the same thing for surface normals here, and then we just do a simple vector summation on those two vectors. Um, what happens is that the relative magnitudes of one to the other will allow you to sort of mix their influences. So this is my vector, which is the sum of the attractor vector and the surface normal. And I'm going to use that as my new z. And you can see that if I set the attractor vector, let's say the surface normal, all the way down to zero, that it's just following my attractor point. But if I set the attractor vector all the way down to zero, then it's just following the surface normal. But if I mix these two, relative to one another, I can create a field of uh, cones that sort of follow the uh, sort of follow the surface, but also have a certain amount of attraction to that attractor point. And there are lots of ways that you could use the same idea to sort of mix the influences of many different attractor points and other forces to create a responsive field of cones.